Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Pinsado's Place. We've got a really special one, one that I've been wanting to do for a long time. If you're an indie producer, songwriter, engineer, mixer, we've got five indie artists brought to us by our good friends at SoundCloud, amongst other things. And we're going to go into the ecosystem of what it's like to be an indie artist, to build your social media, to try to get to success. So stay tuned for that. First of all, you know, it's Sweetwater time. It's their holiday gear giveaway. Go to the link that you see right there. Think about this. In December, there's going to be a winner every single day, 24 winners in a month. Get your emails in now. $70,000 worth of gear is going to be given away. And you want some of that. The boys at Sweetwater are the absolute best. Get to the link and check it out. Um, also, our friends at KRK Creator Classic, the bracket is well underway. The producers are being judged. Your beats are being judged. And then somebody, a few of you, are going to get flown to Nashville, Tennessee, and get to work with a whole bunch of amazing producers. As a matter of fact, coming up is one of those guys, Amadeus, and it, we were blown away at Amadeus and what he's done. So uh, make sure you're checking. Make sure you're seeing if you're one of the winners. You want to be part of this. The good part about the fourth quarter, plug-ins, plug-ins, plug-ins. There, there are more coming out, and we've got some special ones for you. The folks at Blackbird have got an incredible plug-in. The folks at Leapwing have an incredible plug-in. And Dave is prepping an update for his Pensado EQ now, how can you be watching the show and not have a Pensado EQ? Stay tuned for all those details. You'll see them right here. Um, you're going to absolutely make your craft better. And uh, we're going to make sure we provide access for you to be able to do that. Uh, lots of good episodes coming up. Uh, 1500 or nothing. As we told you, Amadeus. A couple of special things. Audio at Cedar sinai in the hospital world. Ways for you. Some stuff about Atmos where you can have an Atmos room, a great episode with Sweetwater about home studios and how to make them better. You know you come to the place because it's Pensado's place. So without further ado, as we promised, a chance to look into the indie world. Thanks to our folks at SoundCloud. The artists are Ayala, Kid Quill, Linda Perry's Surfboard. These They're just anarchists. I just enjoyed them so much. Uh, Will J., and a guy that we had something to do with, his formal name is Naraj Patel. We know him as Raj. Uh, so if you ever thought about indie stuff, you ever want to take a cover, pull it back and see what it looks like, here's your chance. One of the big differences that I have seen is that the tools that are available, um, along with the disposition that majors may not make sense for everybody, is that part of the reason that from an indie standpoint, you decided to move forward yourself. Is it the freedom of making music? Give us, Surfboard, give us your perspective. Yeah, I feel like um, we just started playing insane live shows. So that was like how we started, just crazy maniac styles. And we knew nothing about like the industry. Um, so <laughs> yeah, we still don't really, but um, so we're just used to just making stuff ourselves, kind of DIY styles. Um, but linking with Linda Perry was really cool because she had kind of like an inside like knowledge about production at a higher level that usually goes only when you're like linked with bigger labels yeah. and stuff. So it was kind of cool. We still are in this DIY style, but also with a genius producer. So it's it's cool. And, and from a context standpoint for the audience, one of the things that SoundCloud has done, and three of the artists are here from SoundCloud, is they have decided who to partner with, who to give tools to, how to help take the indie, the indie artist and the vision to the next level without compromising the artist level and the artist sort of vision. Um, that's rare. Usually if you make a, a concession on one side, you're giving up some shit in order to do that. I think that they're trying not to do that. And I think that they're doing it pretty well. The other thing, particularly about surfboard is if there's anybody that is about truth, it's Linda Perry. Um, and she just does not fuck around. And when you have, right. And when, you, when, you, when, when you have reviews that say 
machine gun volley of two minute shards of sound that pummel you into a giddy mess, giddy mess while flicking two fingers to authority. That is a badass review for a badass band. So, yes. uh, right? It's just. I, she like really let us be ourselves still, which was awesome. We didn't have to like sell our soul. <laughs> so mm-hmm. cool. Absolutely. So, Ayala, let's go to the other side of it. You have been doing it yourself. Um, um, I've seen live stuff. I've seen you in your studio set up. You work with All Day. You work with other people. Give me your drive and your vision. Um, yeah, my my vision just like I was really just been focused on the music, you know, on, you know, the pro- producing of it, the songwriting of it, the tonality of it, you know, the direction and um, just mastering the craft. You know, I don't I don't come from like a family of, of music, I come, you know, I got, you know, my dad and, you know, poetry. Um, I just had to learn all this stuff myself, you know, from the ground up. Um every step of the way whether it was you know teaming up with dope engineers and figuring out you know a a, a vocal chain figuring out you know what i like to sound on what what keys sound better what beats sound better how to soundscape and design Mm -hmm. you know i've been really focused on the music you know Mm -hmm. now music and music videos and things to pair that with you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're and you're really financing or doing whatever yourself right yeah 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 you know i'm definitely fortunate to have a great support team and you know amazing people around me Mm -hmm. but um yeah it's all done here you know it's done with Mm -hmm. me and my my team you know well something's going well because that studio looks kind of kind of dope i don't see (laughs) that doesn't look like a bedroom to me (laughs) okay well really cool um i'm you know teamed up and you know paired with Wallace Lane, they work as my management and they're also a label. They do everything. They do all types of services and they also own a studio. You know, we just moved into this facility two months ago, a month ago, mm. a month ago. And um, yeah, really grateful to be working with them. They're they're r- crazy producer duo. They mm-hmm. have, you know, a lot of a lot of, you know, plaques and working with, you know, a lot of people and opportunities you know here but really i love them because they're my brothers and i worked with these guys from the ground up so yeah. you see this big room but like you know we built these rooms you know maybe not right. this one specifically but the foundation of how we got in here was you know mm-hmm. was built up mm-hmm. will j give us your story man well i have been this is it's been a long journey for me i was in a boy band when i was a teenager Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of how I got like a foot in the door. Um, and I, honestly, going back to your uh, first kind of point like about, you know, made, being made major label artist versus independent, we were signed to a major label for about a year. Mm-hmm. And so I had, didn't have the best experience. And so coming out of that and being able to partner with SoundCloud has been awesome because mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is just um, like too many cooks in the kitchen, you know, people mm-hmm. having an opinion on what you should and shouldn't be doing. And mm-hmm. I also think master ownership for the independent artist is so, so important. And, mm-hmm. you know, once you kind of are putting out music and you're actually seeing, you know, you're reaping the fruits of your labor, like you can make a living. And I think that's kind of a misconception that uh, maybe people who aren't in it have is that, you know, as an independent artist, you, there are so many opportunities to make a living and it's so much more than that, but it, it, it's, I've felt really a lot of power in being an independent artist. I've been independent for about six years now and mm-hmm. I partnered with SoundCloud last year mm-hmm. and yeah, it's been great. Just, you know, I just want you to know you ruined my day. Oh um, no. Yeah. Because you are just entirely too pretty. I'm just pissed <laughs> off. You're just way too good looking. This is some bullshit. I'm trying to hold on. Um, uh, but but to your point, and I think this is something all you guys will understand. I When I give talks, I often try to make people understand that doing what you're doing, you're all entrepreneurs. And you may not know it or you may have to learn it, but you're really creating your own businesses while you're moving forward. And that that teaches you how to be involved with everything and even things that you don't want to, you then learn, I either have to have somebody to handle it or, but you learn not to drop balls. Cause when you drop balls, things don't 
move forward. Uh, Kid Quill, what do you think? Um, I mean, honestly, that's been for me the hardest challenge is like running a business while trying to be creative. Yeah, like, it's very two different brains for me. Mm-hmm. And I have to like completely compartmentalize when to be creative and when to take care of the books and when to respond to emails and when to be on top of all the other shit that comes with yeah being creative and putting out music. Yeah. And can I give free Uncle Herb advice? Hit me. Don't let that shit bog you down. If it's not your thing and it starts to fuck with your creativity. Compartmentalize. Totally. And, yeah. and find somebody else who will help yeah. those, yeah. those kind of folks are out there. They don't have to be managers or people who, who work hourly and can be assistants and so on and so forth. So it's not like you have to give up compensation, just like there's an indie world on the artist side. There's an indie world of business services too, to help you get through that. Cause it's important that you're in touch with what makes you good Yeah, and other people do that. So that's free. Generally that would cost you a lot of money, but that's my free one for today. Sure. Um, Candidly, we were talking about <laughs> stories. My, my dad up until early last year was that guy for me. Really? And yeah. it's been fun to do it with him. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I've, I've heard that a lot. Of each other. Yeah. I've heard that a lot. Alex, what's your perspective on all this as, as part of the, part of the entity? Yeah. I mean, I'm just like, basically what Danny said, you know, I joined the band. What? Like five years ago, five and a half years ago. And we made our own stuff. We always made our own stuff and we always recorded our own stuff. Mm-hmm. And even when other people recorded us, it was pretty, you know, like completely different than recording with Linda. Mm-hmm. And um, the combination of having SoundCloud and having Linda is like the dream. Amazing. Amazing. Um, one of the stories that uh, Naraj Patel will tell you that um, Naraj is, comes from much like Stephen's family, and I'm sure there are others, a, a high functioning family with high expectations and not necessarily wanting their kids to go into music and all that kind of stuff. I met him in boxing class and um, ended up beside him. And I was like, the skinny kid was throwing a right hook that was pretty lethal. And um, so we started talking and turns out he was in the business I'm in, but I didn't tell him who I was. And he, not that anybody thinks I'm anybody important, but so he finds out a couple classes later and he's like, oh my God, we used your show with curriculum and my friends would freak out. If And really what happens, and I think this is probably what happened with Linda and Surfboard and Jeff Ponchick and SoundCloud with the rest of you guys, there's something that you do artistically that touches us. And it could be your persona, it could be the music, it could be anything, but there's a reason that the door opens. And that's that happened with Raj. And so very quickly, I started making calls on his behalf and he was kind of freaked out that I was doing that. And his parents were going, who's the black guy in boxing who's now taking over your life? And I was like, you know, you now have a black uncle. Um, and so in short order, he met with Josh Goodwin and kind of freaked out and he's amazing. Then he, I hooked him up with Nick Mack from Post Malone's People, which is pretty crazy. Um, and then he also met with Ku Carell, who's an amazing vocal producer, uh, genius vocal producer. And this probably happened within a month, Raj, you think? Two months, yeah, like pretty short period of time. Um, and I made, I had Raj play Kook music. And Kook heard a song, probably like Linda heard with Surfboard, and went, I want to write with you. And so this guy who graduated from school two or three months ago is now working with a hero. Well, and I'm happy to report that in the last three or four days, Kook has now hired him. He's now working down at the studio and he will end up working with the best songwriters in the world, just as a nature of his course. So, so the point, and Raj, I'll let you get in here. The point to the audience is work on your craft, make it good and stay open to opportunity. You don't know where it's going to come from, but you got to be ready when it comes. If surfboard hadn't been ready or Linda could recognize the power and the rawness and they're, they're just absolute commitment to the punk side of what you guys are doing in hip hop and other kinds of things. That's why people notice you. So your artistry, you got to protect. So Raj, what's been your experience? 
Oh, wow. Uh, I think much like um, Will's journey, it's been a lot. Like, there's been a lot going on. Um, like I said, like I met Herb in, in boxing. Um, it's just crazy to think that, like, I I always wanted to box. And, like, I just made that. I made that jump very sudden. Like, I called the guy the next day. I was like, I want to join your class. And then I think Herb and I started around the same time. Um, and I recognized him. I just didn't want to say anything because I knew he was like, I knew he was a celebrity. I was just like, I, I don't want to like, I don't want to bug him. Cause I feel like people bug him all the time. Um, mm-hmm. But then like one thing led to another. And like within that week, I was like meeting Josh Goodwin. Um, I was meeting like my heroes, people that like I would walk down the streets of sunset and be like, I'm going to meet these guys one day. Like I will either work with them or meet with them or whatever. And like, I got to like, you know, where Josh was working. And I remember like that day I, I met him and like, he opened up sessions and he would, he'd let me work on some stuff. Like it was, it was unreal. And then from there, like, like you said, from there, I went to go to some of my other heroes, like post Malone's guys. And now we're like, I consider us friends, you know, like it's, it's, it's more than just like, Oh, I see him as like, you know, someone who's going to help. It's more like, I really like this per- people's, these people's personality. Like these people connect with me very well. And so we just get along so well. And then I met Kukarel, and he's been my childhood hero. I mean, this guy's this guy's someone I've looked up to for like years. I grew up on his music, and like for him to like Facetime call me like this morning is just even like kind of sets me like what the like like what the hell is my life? You know, like mm-hmm. like just going down there working with him, and like, I don't know what this journey is. I think the biggest thing is I don't know where I'm gonna go next, but. I've come to realize that like, I don't want to plan it. I don't want to be like, this is who I want to meet. This is what I want to do. It's kind of like, I'm enjoying what I do and I'm enjoying the people I meet. I'm just going to keep going because it works. You know? Yeah. I, I think that's, I think part of that is the indie spirit. It, yeah. You know, like, um, let me just follow my, follow your muse and see where it goes. So for each one of you, so surfboard, for instance, What's the next marker for you guys of growth and, and success? I know for a band that performs live, you know, the variant and all that shit has made that kind of crazy. What, what What's what's next step that you guys would feel you want to get to? Well, we just dropped our record yesterday. We oh, started. congrats. Yeah. Um, so we're just so excited. And yeah, kind of what he was just saying, like, we were on beats one with Zane Lowe and I just kind of wow. had this, like re- I just had this like realization I was like wow just like following our hearts and putting in all this hard work and like just believing in everything and staying true to ourselves it's just really magical stuff can happen and it's been like a really exciting journey um I too don't have it all planned out but we're just gonna keep creating like that's just how as artists it's just like that's what you do you react kind of to like the world and what's going on and um i would love to just keep making music and working with heroes and yeah i think yeah going on some big tours would be awesome a lot of ones are about to start yeah i mean you all will be traveling you you all are gonna just destroy some tour i listen i I spent all morning with the videos and I, I just went outside and whooped somebody's ass before I came out. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> was, the guy didn't know what I was doing. I was like, you don't understand. Like, I, I've been listening. To, I'm not even really mad at you, but I just have to get this shit out. So uh, I, I think it's fabulous. Um, Will and Kid, what what for you are the next steps? Um. I think a big one for me would definitely be touring as well. I've kind of, from the band that I was in, like in like three years, we probably did like 200, 250 shows. Wow. So I come from like that background. And as a solo artist, I just haven't really had, you know, a lot of opportunity to do that as much as I would like to. Um, Mm -hmm. That's like a big, that's a big goal of mine is just to, you know, play this music live. Cause I think that's the most magical uh, experience that you can, have is yeah, obviously the creation is magical but getting to have that like in-person view of how your music affects other people is why i do it mm-hmm. um, and yeah i'm just looking forward to that that's mm-hmm. a big one for me how about you Ken? um you know i'm gonna pose it as two different answers okay. i've i've had a little bit of um 
history touring as a solo artist. Right before COVID, I did my first headline run. Um, wow. We did 750 kids in my hometown in Indianapolis. Wow. So that was like the first time where I was like, I think now as we're starting to kind of piece together my record, we're kind of setting the goal of uh, doing a big venue in a couple of years there, a 7,500 mm. cap. Mm. Uh, getting that under the belt and kind of working backwards. But I'm not, for me, I'm not super focused on numbers and statistics and like meeting people or doing, for me, I'm more focused on right now, like my next big thing is I don't think I've made my best song yet. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I just feel like it's still in me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't say that to be corny. That's just something that every day I wake up and it's just like, I'm going to try to make a better song than I did yesterday. And that's kind of where I find the most joy, I guess, in my, in my process. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think, um, well, beyond the fact that you had a hookup with the Indiana Pacers and yeah. I'm an, and I'm an NBA freak. So, um, that, that's a whole, whole other thing, but, and, and Raj for you, what's next? I think, um, in regards to shows, I've, I haven't really thought about it. Um, I used to, play a lot of shows in LA and like sell out clubs and stuff. And, but it's not the life that I really liked. Um, I just did it cause I thought I looked cool. Um, <laughs> but I think, I mean, I have, I have like a, I have an artist, um, like a, a alias that I go under with, with my friend Nav. Um, not that the rapper Nav, but a different Nav. Um, but we sure. do like a lot of pop and R and B. And I think the next goal for me as a solo artist or songwriter and producer and as our alias Mad Bay, which is what it's called, mm -hmm. um, is kind of be like to get in the rooms and songwrite and produce for upcomers, you know, everybody, you know, it, pretty much. I think I'm in the right area where like the talent is matched. And so like just working with people and like working with the big leagues, even people who are coming up, indie artists, like it's just to get more creative insight and like to work with collaborators and then on top of that also do our own thing you know we'll release mm -hmm. our own stuff based off of the knowledge we get from collaborating or like the inspiration we get i think it's just about i guess also getting credit on like like you know just turning up the radio and hearing mm -hmm. like a hit song and be like i wrote that like mm -hmm. or i gotta be a part of that you know like mm -hmm. i got to do that is another one of my big next moves you know so i think that it's show wise i'm not there yet but i think creatively wise it's i'm more focused on that right now uh and ayala what about you man what's next oh um next for me really is uh like music videos and visuals and like i feel like i have all this great music and i really want to like make sure it has like the best reflection of how i feel about it and how i want how i want people to feel about it and react mm -hmm. to it you know mm -hmm. um i'm really just looking into the details of everything you know uh, creatively you know Part of the beauty of all the answers that you guys gave is they're all independent answers. I want to create, I want to look at the show, I want to find my next best song. I want to, you know, it's not, I, I want to get to two trillion followers. It's not like I, I'm going to, you know, dance this dance of the, the owned class as much as you're going to just keep forging your own path into our audience, I think that's the beauty of the independent space starting to mature it it allows for freedom but you can bit pick bits and pieces of structure to help you get to that point so i would imagine and i'm gonna ask all of you from a production standpoint like surfboard you're doing some stuff with linda but i bet you're doing stuff with people that you want to work with and not with people that are being forced on you is that correct yeah. Totally. Yeah. Everyone we work with just has, it's like good vibes and we like link and we connect and yeah, it's not like you have to work with this person. You can't touch that knob. So yeah, that's another great part of about being independent and just like having our own voice in it. And it makes a difference, right? It makes a difference in your creativity. It really does. Yeah. Like, like you can bring it and feel safe about it as opposed to, Am I am oppressing somebody? Is this good enough? Like that's not that's not how you want to make music, right? Yeah, and and working with Sound SoundCloud and Linda Perry, like they, I didn't feel like I had to doubt myself or doubt the situation. I just felt like, 
let's do this. It's made yeah. these songs like this rule. So it's cool. Yeah. We had Linda on and I, I said, Linda, you know, as much as no, I've watched you for years, you work with, I was like, your hat game is such at another level. <laughs> like the hat game is a whole other. I mean, I got hats, but she's got hats and she's got a head for hats. Like it's, um, she's, she's just completely badass. Will and Qu- and and Kid, are you making your own music? How how's production working with you guys? So for me, um, just like a little background, I'm I'm like really from the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like from a small town outside of Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this whole thing, like, started as just me and my friends just making music, mm-hmm. and it just kind of happened that way. Mm-hmm. Um. I didn't make the move out here. I didn't move out here maybe a year ago. Like mm-hmm. I'm very fresh out. Um, mm-hmm. I actually just, just came out here to finish the record I was working on. Mm-hmm. So for me, the the creative process always comes from a place of like, it's the opposite of being forced. Mm-hmm. Like it's all about just like, honestly, if I don't like really connect, connect with someone, then I then I probably won't make a good song with them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I mean. Um, sorry, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I'm getting texts. Oh, that's all right. No, it just it makes you seem busy. Sorry, that's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's all for me, just from like a process of fun. Like, if we're not having fun, then the music's not going to be fun. Or mm-hmm. if I'm not in this certain space, then the mu- it's all from a genuine place for me. Just kind of mm-hmm. just like uh, figuring out where how we're feeling today and what we're doing as mostly as friends. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of lock it in like that. And 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 before I get to Will, just to, just so you have a little his, little background, uh, the black guy on this on this Zoom grew up in Ashland, Kentucky, which was thirty thousand people next okay. door to Indiana. Um, yeah, I, I know it. I know small, little, and following your dream. I think I got here because of my impact. What well, my impact? The way Ashland impacted me about totally. finding your way out, and moving forward. So don't ever lose that. No, totally. And that's kind of why I'm happy I came out <coughs> LA when I did, because like mm-hmm. I already was very sure of myself and the music I make. So it wasn't like I got out here and, you know, bright eyed, bushy tailed. I wasn't very impressionable. I was kind of stubborn with. Yeah. And, 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 and also, I would say this, too. And again, I'm being presumptuous here as everybody's uncle. Um, enjoy the moment. In, in, enjoy this. You know, it goes by. And the reality of it is, is that it is a privilege to be a steward of pop culture. No matter however way you express yourself, it's an honor that people dig you and want to hear your perspective because they could choose not to. And so all the people who sort of sullen their way through it, I'm like, yo, wake the fuck up. You could be at the post office. That, that, that's, that's, this is way the fuck cooler. So along the way, enjoy it along the way. And that will actually affect your creativity in a positive way and it's it the business will beat the shit out of you but then when you look at it you're still highly privileged and it's because of your talent and the gifts you got and that you're going after it so next time you're on you're gonna have to smile 3.5 times during the hour so just want you to know will what about you man your um production side how does it how does it work with you yeah so i i wish i could i wish i could produce but fortunately i have a lot of great friends who are just very incredibly talented producers. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting, you know, I kind of, I echo everything that everyone said so far. I, from my old band, like, you know, we worked with a group of like, you know, A-list producers that worked with whoever and whoever, and, you know, yeah. transitioning as a solo artist, I definitely started with the mindset of like, oh, I should work with established people who have done X, Y, and Z and have plaques all along the wall because it'll be better. Right. And not a knock to those people. Like they're obviously incredible at what they do and they deserve all their success. But for me, um, I just have so more, I get better results when I'm working with people that are my friends that who I have fun with and who I, I think like, I'm not afraid to be, to come off a certain way. And, you know, we're all comfortable with each other. And I also feel like, you know, creativity is just such a, a, journey into something that's not tangible and is unknown and Mm -hmm. if you're not with people that you're comfortable with that channel just gets blocked yeah Um, and so 
I only, I only do stuff with people that I really vibe with because I'm just not going to get to where I need to go in mm-hmm. that ether <laughs> if, mm-hmm. uh, if I don't feel that way. And, and, and I'll say this because Raj, I want to get your perspective, but I think there's potentially some danger if you and Raj hook up. I was just thinking the same thing. Let's yeah. Do it. Yeah. I think there's some, da- and, and by the way, I encourage everybody to mash up because even if, even if you spend three or four hours mashing up and you don't like anything that comes from it, sometimes some magic shit happens and you go, Whoa, I never thought I'd see that coming. So people have to try to do that. What we teach on the show is that everybody's sort of a hybrid. Everybody's a bit of a writer. Everybody's a bit of an engineer. Everybody's a bit of a producer, a bit of a songwriter. It's not all these specialized silos like it used to be. Mm-hmm. And you learn different things when, when that happens. Oh, I'm sorry. Usually when we do that, we say Beyonce's calling, even though it's never her. Um, uh, so, um, uh, but, it, but to that end, um, the exciting things come out of when you kind of do the unexpected and, and sometimes get, the, and, then, and if it's an exercise that didn't work, then it's an exercise, it's three or four hours. But if something magical happens and it becomes that definer or that thing that can take you to the next level, it's always worth it to at least try it and see it. We do it on the show all the time. We often have our competition on the show and ask them to push us or we go to outside stuff. Raj, in your particular case, I've gotten to know your family and your parents and they've been supportive of you and you have your facility so production has always been part of what you're doing. Are you looking to collaborate and push that envelope outside of what you're doing or what, what's, what's the Raj perspective? Definitely. So I think I've been producing for like eight years now, I think um, coming up. But, so but that wouldn't mean you started when you were four. Oh, so, <laughs> Oh no, I'm sorry. You just look young. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, no, but I think I, I started about eight years ago, but I didn't know a thing about songwriting or engineering. So I would just like, I, I, I was very, I was very amateur level, but anyways. Um, so I got into engineering when I went to the recording school in Los Angeles. And then that's also when I got into songwriting. So the degree I graduated with was when was in engineering. So I am definitely looking to improve that craft as I'm working on it. But as a producer, I feel like I'm, I'm exactly what you just said. I'm, I'm looking to push that envelope. Like I'm looking to collaborate and like, I think I'm in a place and the right mindset and the skill level to start like working with people who are creatively there with me. Like, mm-hmm. like, like Will said, like, you know, it's all about the vibe that you get with people and it's all about the way you guys work rather than just, okay, it's a job. Let's get a paycheck. Let's do this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Instead of taking it step by step, it's let's just go with the flow. And like, if everything works well, then it can work again and again and again and again, you know, mm-hmm. Alex for the band what what is success connection like just connecting with the most people i think like not in a class way of like having like you were talking about having followers it's just like i think it comes from live shows like as a kid it but the live show was the thing that impacted and changed my life was like having that i grew up in in that in that punk rock scene where it wasn't like stadium rock it was like going and having that immediate kind of connection that you felt in your body Mm -hmm. it it shifted like saved me and ruined me so like ready to do that to other people yeah i mean a a good mosh pit will change you know it'll make the day go good (laughs) not even just that yeah just like the happiness Our, our mosh pits are not like any i've ever even seen um like I grew up with the eighties, like dude mosh pit. And yeah. uh, now, now it's like the happiest, like, especially the first two shows we played back, it was so cathartic because people had been, it was like the recoil of, the, of being a spring being packed down. It was just like, everybody was, I was smiling so big. Like everybody, I was looking at people on stage, people off stage and everybody was just like so ecstatic to be doing the thing, you know, yeah. to connect really. Yeah, no, and 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 we're messengers of that stuff. You know, we have the we have the opportunity to to bring it and and have people enjoy it. It's 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 incredible. Ayala, what's what's success for you, man? Uh, honestly, I I agree with connection. It's just connecting with people, connecting with like strangers, connecting with someone. It doesn't matter where you are, or where you're from, but if you can relate to, or if you can just relate to the 
the, the sounds to the the tones to the songwriting to the idea to anything because you know there's people from different countries that like you know my music or like you guys's music and it's just like wow or why and that's so cool to me you know being mm -hmm. able to not know somebody but feel like you do mm -hmm. feel like for something this guy must have been feeling how i was feeling because i'm pissed right now or because i'm <laughs> excited or i don't know you know like, yeah. that's really cool i think that's success if you can yeah. do that and be happy with what you're giving to the world mm -hmm. that's success right there Kid, for you, is it is it coming up with that next great song? Um, maybe personally, but mm -hmm. I I would also say connection for sure. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I, I I could really give a fuck less about anything other than showing up to a small city and people knowing the words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. there's no greater feeling than that. None. Um, so I would he he definitely hit the nail on the head. Yeah, yeah. And will you feel the same way? Absolutely. I mean, that's why I want to do live shows so bad is just, mm -hmm. I think it's the transfer of this beautiful thing where it's like, even as like a fan to the artists that I love, you know, they mm -hmm. write something and I feel not as if I wrote it, but I can directly apply it to my life. And it feels like something that is mine. Like that's, that's the most magical shared experience. I think mm -hmm. that one of them that we can experience as human beings, I think, yeah. in art, you know, and you, you get that like in the most, I guess, pure form when you're mm -hmm. at a show mm -hmm. and somebody's singing back your words to you for a different, for a different reason or a different experience. But, you know, the feeling is the same. I, um, I cheated a little <clears throat> and I said, okay, what does it feel like to be a rock star? And so we put on an award show and I design it and I'll, you know, I'm whatever. I, I have 16 hats. That's why my head is so big. Um, and so Dave and I don't host it. We actually have the, the talent hosted engineers, producers, and I write it and all that kind of stuff. But there's a point where we come out toward the end and we give away two awards. And I found myself putting so much time into that 45 seconds. Cause when you walk out and people are waiting for you and they love you, it is fucking amazing. <laughs> like it's the, it's the closest I've felt to the rock star thing. And you walk out and people stand up and they scream and shit. And I was like, this shit is better than sex. Kind of. <laughs> like, um, and, and so I, I can only extrapolate that time out and say, God, an hour and a half of that, or people knowing all your words or whatever the case may be. Cause for that 30 seconds of craziness, it is, it's so powerful, but it also inspires you like to do more. And like, you know, like it, for me, it lifted me and said, let me, you know, it's the closest I got to feeling what you guys would feel. But all that, all the impact of it was to do more, do better, do bigger, go fucking kill it. You know, you know, it wasn't like I'm the hottest shit in the world. It was like something I'm doing people really like, and I want to do more of that because they like it, you know, and it's a very raw kind of honest thing, you know? So, um, so when you see award shows, know our award show, know that it's motivated by the 30 seconds I get to have toward the end of the show. <laughs> but the award show is fun, and there are companies that are talking about us doing it. And would love to have some of you guys be presenters or hosts and all that other kind of stuff. We make it an absolute ball. If the other things are the Oscars, we're the Golden Globes. Yeah. We, we <laughs> fuck around, we talk shit, we do fun shit. So we'll we'll get to that in a minute. Um Real quickly, just give the SoundCloud platform for the three of you that, that are there. Has it been what you've expected it to be? Has the, the artist service been what you need it to be? Is it something that you feel good about your decision at this stage of the game and want to hang with? Surfboard, what about you guys? We're we're pretty new to it, but it's it's seeming pretty, pretty badass at this yeah. point. No. I think there's a lot of freedom in it and just, yeah, connecting with the SoundCloud people. It's just like you're hanging out with your best friends and they're like, oh, what do you, what's your art? Oh, we love that. Like, let's make it like kind of like give it a more of a voice and show more people. Yeah. So 
it's just all really cool. It's inspiring. so cool and so different than look, I came up on the major label system. You had to crack that nut and get in there and be part of the, you know, upper 1% and all that. Kind. And it was very cool once you got inside, but it was very frustrating trying to get inside. What, what I like that Jeff Ponchik and the guys at SoundCloud have done, it's kind of like just talking to your people. Yeah. Like, it, you know, it's like, yo, it's a regular human. It's really cool. Um, kid, what about you with SoundCloud? Good thing? Yeah, I, I, I really fuck with all the people over there. Like, you know. Yeah. Those are the people you're going to be working with every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that was a major decision, just how cool they are. But I feel like it's a good fit for me. But like mm-hmm. any independent artist that's watching this, like, I mean, you got to just like really kind of think about what you need. You know, like for me, it made sense because I have, you know, a creative director that's been with me forever and I have a good management team. We just needed, you know, candidly, just some some resources to get mm-hmm. ideas out mm-hmm. and it's like the perfect fit for me because mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. you know when you get to the majors you start and we've we've held on to the independence purposefully um yeah. just because when you get to that like you said you got to crack that nut and everyone has a nut opinion and soundcloud's really been great to just kind of let us they've just kind of thrown fuel on yeah. the fire that we've been trying to build over the last few years so yeah it's a good great fit for me will same thing with you for soundcloud absolutely um i think similarly the what i needed was some infrastructure because you know on the creative side i was good i have a great manager um so they have been amazing for that and Mm -hmm. i think it really is important yeah as echoing what he said as a independent artist you know if you still, you know, if the majors are something that you desire or just elevating in any sense, like mm-hmm. you don't want to have question marks and you don't want to have mm. holes that other people um, want to, f- you know, take the opportunity to fill, like in your artistry, you know, mm-hmm. if you have anything that you're not sure about, somebody else is going to give you their opinion and it's going to dilute what makes you great and what makes you um mm-hmm the best version of yourself artistically. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, SoundCloud has been amazing. Alex, your perspective in the band, same? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking when he was talking, like it's the difference between the singular voice of like any of these artists or our band versus a chorus of making some deal with people that want some input or want to mute some part of your sound. So great point. Um, the other thing I think is, is, is really important for your artistry. And before I get to you, Raj, is you should have the freedom to make a mistake. Like you don't, right? Right, kid? Like, it's not about I was perfect all the way through and I got rewarded for perfection. You need to be artistic all the way through. And when something goes left, somebody shouldn't abandon you and leave you there. You should be able to say, oh, okay, I learned. Let me adjust this time and grow. And that's that's what I'm so impressed with what Jeff Ponchik and those guys are doing at SoundCloud. And also, sorry. Beyonce must need something, man. Jesus. What's that? I said, Beyonce. I said, yeah, Beyonce must need something really fast. I, I think she's pissed at Jay. And usually, <laughs> usually she calls when she's pissed at Jay. <laughs> um, uh, so, Raj, now you your path is a little different now. You are indie in your heart, but now you have access to... I would say a major guy who thinks like an indie, like he, he, even though that's where his checks come from, he sort of sets up his own thing. Like last time I interviewed him, you were there. He said, you know, I don't know much about the business. I don't keep up with it. I don't do this. I just do what I do. So is that, do I have that right, Raj? Yeah, I think so. I think he's, you know, if I, if I sit and think about it, um, when I'm with him, when I'm with Kook, if I sit and think about it, I'll get like nervous and, and and on edge because I'm I'm sitting next to someone who's written like the biggest records like Baby by just like he's he's written the biggest of the biggest. But if I sit next to him and think of it like, oh he's 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 tutoring, he's mentoring me, he's teaching me the ways of how to become more civilized in this business and how to act and what to say and what not to do. Then I think of it like oh he's he's more of a mentor to me rather than I'm a fan of his. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I think 
that's a different perspective. And it's also about like, you know, something, this is a, is a little bit has to do with something else, but, but what Nav was telling my friend, he was saying, you know, kind of exploring my options and like, you know, working with Nick and working with, you know, Fernando or working with, you know, Kook is like, it gives me perspectives on three different things in three different ways, you know? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. like I could take advice from Fernando and Kook and Nick and like mesh it. And then that's what becomes Raj. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like that, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. how I feel. And, and I think, I think as I've gotten to know you and kind of as a mentor too, the fight is to maintain that indie thing, man. Um, yeah. You know, you, you want to own this because you guys are really the mainstream now, but the mainstream in a cool way. Not the mainstream where you were odd because you weren't on a major. Now you're the shit because you're not on a major. And the, and this is not a diss to the majors. Yeah. It, it's really like the a business that can affect so many people should have various platforms and various ways to get the message out. And the indie way fits all you guys. And and I want you to know the reason we want to do this show is we wanted all you guys to be beacons to other people. So that they could go, oh, that's what kid does. Oh, that's what surfboard does. That's what Raj does. And, and and by the way, you don't have to be in a big city and you don't have to, you know, know, you know, Lord God, Jesus, music person. You got to have your, you got to have nuts and you got to have a vision and you got to have a commitment. Yeah, and you know, right. when I speak, when I speak to, you know, I speak to lots of kids with kids. Oh, Beyonce, no. That's okay now. <laughs> and Talise, you can keep all those all those rings in. I think it's kind of funny. Um, and, and I know she doesn't. So trust me, I'll be cussed out <laughs> after this. Um, um, I say that because our show represents that. Um, to have a 55-year-old start a show with somebody six years older than him 11 years ago, people thought we were batshit nuts. And 11 years later, in 200 countries with 10 million people a year watching us, blah, 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 and people coming on going, that's an all an independent perspective. Nobody who had advice would say that's what you should do. Um, and guess what? <laughs> <laughs> here, here we are. Um, so um, I got to tell you what you did today and what we'll get together is such a great educational piece. Um, I am in awe and in, and on bended knee Pensado's places to your craft, to your commitment, to the music that you do. I want you to know that you can utilize our platform at any time that you want. Uh, the surfboard record just came out. Check that shit out. Find it someplace. Keep on and, trucking. And, yeah. And, and, and if and if you have a trash problem, listen to that song called Trash, and 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 it will a, absolutely. Um, I, I have listened to everybody's music; it's really impressive. I will tell you that uh, Naraj Patel, or Raj, as a young guy, is an incredible songwriter on the way. And 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 so, folks who are watching this, this is how you get discovered. You can do it your own way, and um, and and prosper, and move forward. Thank you so much for your time. This is going to be yep. meaty and juicy. Um, <laughs> thanks for thanks for caring about us. Know again, you can come back at any time, and uh, and to the audience, learn from this, watch this, and we will we'll see you next week. <laughs>